Um, next, we're going to turn it over to another uh, hot topic in the county. We're thrilled that Thomas Tippett and Grace Peterson of the Montgomery County Office of Management and Budget were able to join us this afternoon. Um, the county executive released his budget about a week ago, and uh, I'd love to just turn it over to Thomas and or Grace now. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Thomas Tippett. I'm from the Office of Management and Budget. I'm a alumni of the Food Council and a lifelong friend. Um, here with Grace, she's the OMB analyst for HHS, where many of the food related FY24 investments have been made. Uh, I'm just going to go over a little bit of context around the budget, how it's prepared, how the decisions are made, how you can get involved, uh, and some of the budget pressures that we've been under, because this, this was a difficult budget. Um, but for those of you that don't know, the county's fiscal year starts on July 1 and ends on June 30th. Um, departments and agencies begin to submit their budget proposals in fall, uh, so fall of last year for this budget cycle. And then um, at that same time, the county executive has budget forums, which is a great place for either residents or organizations like yours to come and publicly communicate your priorities to the executive there. You know, he's a very busy person and there isn't a lot of time. You know, there are no public hearings for the county executive. So these, these are the only opportunities where you can publicly uh, advocate for your organization and your priorities. Um, so then in winter, the executive, the Office of Management and Budget and department and agency leadership get together and uh, deliberate on the proposed budgets for organizations. Um, and then in March, you know, just last week, the executive uh, on March 15th, the executive transmits his budget over to the county council, where they then deliberate, alter, and finally approve the county's operating budget for the next fiscal year, FY24, which starts July 1 of 2023. Um, and I would say this is the first budget in a while that's been normal. And what I mean by that is not that we've had uh, extenuating circumstances where we're providing services uh, to protect our residents during the pandemic, but it's the first time we're creating a budget without a major infusion of federal funding, like Council Member Balcom just stated. So that is one of our, our major, major budget pressures is that, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars are not there within our revenue structure to provide those essential services. And the executive has gone to great lengths uh, to continue these services, right? Rental assistance, food distribution, the hubs were funded from the American Rescue Plan funding, um, the Working Family Income Supplement, which if you don't know, um, there's been a match for the earned income tax credit for low-income families, and the executive is going to continue to match that at 70 percent, uh, utilizing general fund and the normal tax revenues that we receive. Other budget pressures include uh, high inflation. Um, you know that has just increased the cost of county services and contracts, utilities, fuel, etc. Um, there's been increased demand uh, on county services. Uh, a highly competitive. Uh, labor market. So that's had pressure on wages and compensation for, for county workers and emergency responders and a projected mild recession. Um, and this is the last budget pressure, but it's the most significant, right? So we're, we've lost this federal funding, but we're also having major write downs in tax revenue, property, recordation, uh, recordation taxes due to uh, you know, mortgage rates being high. Um, there, are, there isn't a lot of selling of houses going on. So we are on, under major budget pressures, yet the county executive is finding ways to preserve those essential services for, for human services, feeding, rental assistance, and the essential hubs that we've uh, created in the FY23 budget. Um, some of the, I just want to go into the, some of the key highlight investments, and then I'm going to let Grace touch on uh, some of the food-related items. But again, the executive has been able to preserve those essential services, 
He's provided record funding for the Montgomery County uh, public school system. He's providing uh, programmatic uh, enhancements within uh, child care. He's fully funding the Montgomery College budget. He's providing additional investments in economic development and workforce training. He's reestablishing the Montgomery County Office of the People's Council, um, which is a, a mediation group for, for residents and homeowners. Provides additional, and it provides additional support for the county's uh, community partners. Um, so those are the kind of the major overview of the FY24 budget. But I just wanna touch on one of the points that Council Member Balcom uh, stated, which is the uh, Office of Food Systems Resilience. Um, you know, that was an FY23 creation. The executive saw exactly what the food security task force did and accomplished in the top, you know, in our time of need and said, you know, we need to sustain that structure and infrastructure and solidify it within the base of the county's operating budget. So he created that office. It's an office of three and maintains uh, ongoing funding for programs like the money market grants, the community gardens grants program, the farm to food bank program, and I'm missing one and the food council. Um, so, I mean, that the executive sees, you know, food systems resilience as a major priority. He's created a non-principal office for it, which is not something that is done uh, lightly in, in county government. Um, so it has definitely been a major priority for, for the county executive. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to, to Grace to just go over some of the investments that were made in FY24, again, considering the, um, you know, that federal funding going away, these are investments made, uh, you know, in the, the normal tax revenue structure that the county has. Right, thank you, Thomas. Uh, so the executive was balancing the challenge of so much federal assistance going away while trying to transition the county out of a period where um, the pandemic was so devastating at first, and now we're um, getting to a more normalcy, but people really still see a uh, real need for food assistance. So um, in fiscal 23, there was over 12 million committed to um, what we call the food staples program. And going forward, um, that, that funding was previously supported entirely by federal funds, and now we're evaluating what general fund commitment needs to be made to ensure people don't go hungry. Um, and pro that program is still available, but still also affordable within the, um, the county's budget. So, uh, so far in the, uh, the executive's fiscal 24 recommended budget, there's 6.1 million devoted to this program. And the plan is that um, after the first quarter, we'll evaluate uh, what spending has been thus far in the fiscal year and see um, whether that will be enough resources to continue through the full year or if additional resources may be needed. Um, and at that point, a supplemental appropriation would be processed with um, council approval. Then going to um, the community organizations, um, that what's not listed here, but I'm glad you brought that, this up, Thomas, is that um, the community service hubs Funding has also been continued in fiscal 24. That's about $3 million in general funds uh, that uh, was previously supported with federal assistance, but the executive has committed to funding the, the hubs in the upcoming fiscal year. Um, and then I noted a couple of um, grantees that um, submitted specific requests. The Charles Queener um, Conservancy for Urban Farming receives a $50,000 general fund enhancement. Nourishing Bethesda receives an increase of $24,000 um, in general funds to expand their service, um, their operational hours. And then um, notable, there's a $300,000 decrease in Mana Food Center from what was made possible in fiscal 23 with the additional federal funding, but um, the executive has committed an overall increase compared to their resource levels before the pandemic, before that federal infusion of funding. So um, before the pandemic, they were regularly receiving, um, I think it was about $270,000. So 
an additional 275,000 has been committed to the Manor Food Center. So although it's a decrease from fiscal 23 going forward, it is an increase overall to the Manor Food Center. Um, so those are some general uh, highlights to specific organizations and programs, and I'd be happy to answer any questions as well. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Thomas or Grace? I'm going to move us to the gallery view because so we can all see each other. I know this is a very hot topic. I would just ask Thomas and Grace, I think uh, Council Member Balcom explained this a little bit, but if so let's say this is the only time that we um, have folks on to speak about the county budget process. Uh, so we know that there's an opportunity to weigh in in April as county council is deliberating, but for folks on the call or future folks that are watching the recording, when is the right time to um, present, you know, opportunities for county funding to the county executive so that, you know, investments like what happened with uh, the Charles Coiner Farm, you know, could be considered for the FY25 budget, for example? Um, I would say both from a resident organization standpoint, uh, often it is the, the answer, right? So at, as soon as the budget is completed, the approved budget comes out. I mean, the, getting things on the leadership's radar is is what you have to do and you guys are obviously already organized but i would if i was to tell a resident what to do it would be get involved in a, in a larger group whether it's your civic association your um, homeowners association a, a group like yours um just you're 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 better off in numbers right because you know we this is a democracy and like the, the larger the larger you can show that your group is, the, the higher priority your request will be going forward. Uh, I mentioned the budget forms in the fall. That is a really great place. Um, I mean, the executive's mind is going toward the budget at that point, but I would say earlier in summer would, would be, is the place to, you know, start working toward the FY25 operating budget um, because these are, you know, once things start churning, if you, if it, if it's not a high priority or in a, in a list come fall, um, it is, it's going to get beaten out by, you know, the, the already hard decisions that are just to keep county government funded at the same services level in most years. Thank you. Does anyone else have, I have more questions, but um, I wanna pause again. Thomas or Grace, could you tell us a little bit about the recession projections and how that impacts uh, planning for the future and how that might impact. So if we're, we are thinking, or if our community is thinking about making budgetary ask for FY25, um, you know, how do those projections work and, you know, just what should advocates be aware of? Uh, projections are magic, right? They are, but um, what, you know, there are multiple indicators that you know we we know what our property tax is going to be, but income taxes make or break our budget. You know, we know what recordation taxes are, which is and transfer taxes of property. So anything that's property based, we we know the indicators, and it's almost real time. It's the, that income tax that is really going to make or break the budget. So there are three times in the year that we, we look at this. We look at it in June. Um, there's a fiscal update in December. Um, so between this past, between June and December of this year, we actually wrote down taxes uh, at a hundred million dollars from June to December. So we knew coming into the February fiscal update, whereas we, where we really solidify what we're going to build the budget off of, um, you know, that we were going to, that it was going to be a really tight budget year. Um, so I would, as an 
as someone that's developing request of county government, uh, I would stay tuned, especially to that December update on um, where the, the projections are, right? Are they above the June? Are they below the June? If they're below the June, uh, it's likely going to be some something of a same services and just decisions are gonna be very hard come February and March for the executive. That's really helpful. Anne-Marie, I'm gonna call on you for a question that I got directly in the chat. Could you tell uh, the group a little bit more about the hubs in like 30 seconds or, or a minute? Um, Marla's watching me. She's going to quiz because she probably knows them uh, better than I do. Um, but we do have eight hubs in the county that are, um, you know, set to work with very specific high need zip codes in the county, although they will, you know, they don't turn anyone away, but they do try to connect people to their appropriate hub. Um, some of them, they all provide food. They all provide um, other wraparound services. Uh, many of them do have uh, partnerships with either Catholic Charities or Cheer or other community organizations um, to assist with SNAP enrollment, you know, connecting with benefits. Uh, some of them distribute diapers, which is, you know, a really high need, high cost item in the county for families. So really just trying to kind of connect you know, with all the different services that families might need um, in that area, and then to work with other local partners um, to provide additional services. How's that, Marla? You done good. Way to go, Henry. <laughs> Chris, I hope that helped answer your question. I'm sure someone will find a link for you that they that we can drop in the chat if you want. More oh, info. I can. I'll put it in the chat for. Thank um, you. Thank yeah. you. Thomas and Grace, I have one last question, but I do want to pause because I've been asking all the questions. Okay, I'll, I'll ask the final question. Um, can you explain, so the budget process happens, you know, it's a big process happens once per year, but then there are special appropriations that happen throughout the year. Could you just explain how that process works briefly and like that's that this isn't quite the only opportunity for things to be added to the budget um the short answer is they should be um so supplemental appropriations were rare um prior to the COVID-19 pandemic um they become they became a regularity because of the emergency nature of operations to provide emergency protective measures to county residents, businesses, tenants, um, and also the, um, again, the infusion of federal funds that weren't appropriated to department budgets, right? So both the funding and just the nature of the operations. So there were general fund special appropriations during the pandemic, but many of them were the uh, federal funding being spent via special appropriation. So that is often not a, a mechanism that we would uh, advocate for. Uh, and we, we are attempting to re realign expectations back to the, uh, but the, the, fiscal, the fiscal budget process. That's really helpful information, especially as you know, we've seen so many special appropriations over the last few mm -hmm. years. It's helpful to know where that process originated and, and that it's going to kind of become, you know, an emergency times only perhaps process. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. I, I know this was really helpful. A lot of people had a lot of questions about the budget and it's really timely. So we really appreciate both of you joining us and um, walking us through how it impacts the food system and um, the opportunities to preserve some of those programs that were originated during the pandemic. So thank you, Thomas and Grace. Um, Thomas, great always to see a Food Council alumni on the call. So 